We've all heard it so many times before. If you crack your knuckles, you'll get arthritis. But is this just something we're told to stop us having fun, like mud puddles aren't for splashing or Hasselhoff doesn't really have a talking car? I'm a big knuckle cracker, but apparently people also pop or crack their hips, jaws, ankles and Achilles tendon. So what's the deal? And can manhandling your knuckles cause problems in the long run? Where two bones meet, you get a joint. Some are fixed, held together by connective tissue like in your skull, and some can move a little bit like the joints between the vertebrae in your spine. But the most common type of joints are the ones that can move a lot. They're called diarthrodial or synovial joints. There's a gap between the two bones. The joint is kept stable by ligaments, which form a kind of capsule, and inside that is a fluid that stops the two ends of the bones rubbing together. It's called synovial fluid, hence the name. This synovial fluid contains lots of dissolved gases, including oxygen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide, and also nutrients for the cells that maintain the joint cartilage. Right, there are six types of synovial joints, including ball and socket joints like your hips or shoulders, hinge joints in your knees and elbow, and pivot joints in your neck or wrist. But the ones we're most interested in are the ones that pop really easily in your fingers, the interphalangeal and the metacarpophalangeal joints. So what happens when you crack your knuckles? When you move the joint, you stretch the capsule inside. And as the volume increases very slightly, the pressure drops enough that the dissolved gases inside that synovial fluid can separate out to form microscopic bubbles. They clump together into bigger bubbles, but are quickly popped as more fluid rushes in to fill that increased space in the cavity. And as the bubbles collapse, you get that characteristic cracking sound. Some studies say that there are two noises. The first when the gases come out of the solution and the second when you can't actually stretch the capsule anymore. Some cracking here isn't bubble related at all. Creaking knees or ankles as you stand up is down to the tendons and ligaments that cross over your joints. They're shifting slightly and snapping back into position. Ouch. There is a purpose to all this though. The removal of air bubbles from the joint creates more space in it, so it gives a, a joint a wider range of movement. Cool fact, Claxon. After you've cracked your joints, you can't crack them for about 15 minutes because it takes that long for the joint to get back to its original size and for more gases to dissolve in the fluid ready to form again. So is cracking your knuckles bad for you? What's the evidence? One paper I found did report a couple of acute injuries, including finger ligament and tendon sprains, which I guess would put you on the tiddlywinks bench for a while. But the main worry concerns osteoarthritis, the pain and inflammation produced from the breakdown of cartilage. The worry is that the energy released when those bubbles pop could cause damage in the joints in a similar way that ship's propellers get damaged by cavitation as bubbles form and collapse on their surfaces. One study looking into this in the Journal of the American Board of Family Medicine in 2011 looked at over 200 subjects. The researchers discovered that 18% of those people who cracked their knuckles regularly had hand osteoarthritis, and that 21% of those people who didn't crack their knuckles regularly had hand osteoarthritis. In other words, there was no causal link between knuckle cracking and osteoarthritis, and there are lots more studies that support this conclusion. A special mention goes to Donald Unger, a Californian doctor who cracked the knuckles of his left hand at least twice a day for more than 60 years. As a control, he left his right knuckles uncracked. The results? He said he couldn't see the slightest sign of arthritis in either hand. And he published his research and it won him an Ig Nobel Prize in 2009. Cracking science! So there you go. No link has been found between cracking your knuckles and arthritis. However, some research did find that habitual knuckle crackers had a lower grip strength. So if you're an arm wrestling champ, you've been thinking of taking up parkour, or if you just need to grip anything, I'd keep the knuckle cracking to a minimum.